Hello there. Well, this is not going to go down very well with some of the more, um, ardent members of the Labour administration's preferred demographic, is it? Our political master and Prime Minister Keir Starmer attended a dinner hosted by the Holocaust Educational Trust last night, where he said that anti-Semitism was on the rise in the UK and that since October the 7th last year we've seen, right here in Britain, hatred marching on our streets, the pulse of fear beating in this community. Children afraid to wear their school uniforms. Students targeted on university campuses. All again because they are Jewish. Now remind me who has been marching about on the streets spewing anti-Semitism. And who let them do so virtually unchecked. Who gets the free pass? And why no finger-pointing at the culprits? Starmer never indicated who the anti-Semites he was referring to were. But it's all OK, because we'll be building a National Holocaust Memorial and Learning Centre right next to Parliament. Boldly, proudly, unapologetically, he said. Well, he might be a bit more supportive of the Jews after this exploding pager epidemic spreading across the Middle East, mightn't he? Will he be asking his civil service mandarins to check where the last shipment of mobile electronic devices came from? Anyway, Starmer also committed in his speech to ensuring that every student in the UK would have the opportunity to hear recorded testimony from a Holocaust survivor all part of his new national ambition to improve education on the subject. Now, opportunity is one thing, ensuring they attend and listen is another. Will all demographics accept and embrace this initiative? Now, the first anniversary of that shameful day last year is less than three weeks away. Monday, October the 7th, 20 days away. Are there plans to mark that day and condemn the vile acts of those soulless terrorists? Acts that persist to this day with the holding of hostages. Yes, Prime Minister, why not a minute's silence led by you if we are to be really serious about anti-Semitism? Has Sadiq Khan got anything in mind for London to mark that day? Let's hear about it because I can guarantee there will be many nasty people about the globe, some within this very country, who will like to celebrate the actions of Hamas on that day. And we can't let that happen. Richard. How wonderful to hear that our wise, fair and just Prime Minister, Sir... Ooh, Sir... Sir Keir Starmer is going to make sure that anti-Semitism is called out for the abominable hatred that it is. Well done, Sir Keir, well done. Yes, I am sure that this new initiative and thrust of yours, ooh, thrust, will see swift imprisonment of demonstrators who chant from the river to the sea, won't it? Yes, I am sure that the protection offered to the places of worship of our replacements will also be offered to synagogues and to Jewish schools and to churches and to Christian schools and to Buddhist and Hindu temples and schools. Hmm. Or is this all just hot air? Because Sir Keir can see the potential of civil war creeping ever closer. I mean, Sir Keir, you didn't get the nickname to Tia Keir because of the undisputed equality applied by yourself across all sections of society under the judiciary, under your watch. No, <laughs> that name just popped up with no bearing to your glaringly obvious favoritism towards our replacements. But I am rather suspicious of this, rather out of character, slightly out of character, just a little bit out of character, moved by yourself, Sakia. Could it really be that you and your government can see civil unrest on the hills yonder? 
by an angry population which is now forcing you to protect more than just the replacements? Or is something else at play? Jeff. Now, those very ardent members of a certain demographic and their blinkered supporting sheep are not at all amused by Keir Starmer's speech last night. They are accusing the Prime Minister of hypocrisy because he is supporting Israel right now in its proper actions to defend the nation and its people by destroying Hamas. But Starmer is involved in a genocide in Gaza, they weepingly claim. While marching up and down London on a weekly basis shouting that genocidal chant from the river to the sea, something that requires the destruction of Israel and they've been doing it ever since that genocidal act of Hamas on the 7th of October. And that's where the true hypocrisy lies. But these people will be very, very pleased once Keir Starmer starts pushing the anti-Islamophobia laws through Parliament, won't they? At which point you do have to wonder if anti-Semitism will then be hardwired into the statute books by default, don't you? Anyway, as I said, Starmer did not point fingers at the source of this growing anti-Semitism in the UK, did he? But he can always fall back in future on his normal target, can't he? Yes, the far right. He cannot possibly blame the left because he's claiming he's kicked anti-Semitism out of his Labour Party. Nor can he blame his preferred demographic because of his soon-to-be-introduced blasphemy laws. And he wants their votes too. And that only leaves, yes, the far right, doesn't it? I mean, you can't have a rise in anti-Semitism without identifying those who are being anti-Semitic, can you? So how's he going to engineer that then? Probably just by lumping far right Islamophobia and anti-Semitism into one phrase in every future government speech. But worse, he can't give a speech like he did last night, then blame Jews for any rise in Islamophobia, can he? And remember, Lady Starmer is Jewish. Oh, but he can always blame the far right though, can't he, for a rise in Islamophobia? And we all know now that the term far right has become a dysphemism for average concerned citizens. Not a good omen for ordinary Brits, is it? Richard. Ah, how silly of me not to have worked this out earlier. How could this new and uncharacteristic crackdown on anti-Semitism work to Sir Keir's benefit? Hmm. Ah, yes, to stamp out the far right. Sorry, I failed to see it earlier, probably because of a a little bit of cheese I ate before bed, affecting my cognitive function. Yes, indeed, it was the National Socialist German Workers' Party who committed acts of pure evil against the Jews and carried out the Holocaust. And we should never forget the evils committed by the National Socialist German Workers' Party. They were indeed what we have come to know as far right. However, my concern is the dilution of the term far right by the left to include anyone who is right of Leon Trotsky means potentially that anti-Semitism could be used as justification to crack down on anyone who disagrees with Starmer and his cronies. The irony here is most of those that are being wrongfully identified as far right by Keir Starmer are the very ones who are supporting Israel and the Jews. If, and I repeat, if anti-Semitism is to be used by Sir Keir Starmer as an excuse to crack down on decent, ordinary British citizens, then that will be an extreme act of anti-Semitism in itself. Let us pray that these musings of mine are utterly wrong here, because this could be a deliberate act of misdirection by Starmer to hide the real place where anti-Semitism lives and thrives. And that is amongst the far left and many members of his own political party. I mean, so many of those chanting from the river to the sea are members of the British Socialist Workers' Party, which does actually euphemistically sound rather like the National Socialist German Workers' Party. Hmm. 
All conjecture, of course, on my part. Move along.